how, how do you have a good fight? Um, it's, a, it's a delicate balance because on the one hand, you're having strong feelings. You get defensive, you have strong feelings, and you want to hear those feelings. You want to tend to those feelings, but you don't want them to let you to overtake you so that you go completely like taken by them. So you want to be able to, to st you know, that's where the mindful, mindfulness that we've been practicing and talking about in this class is helpful. The sort of Buddhist sort of like, mm -hmm. you're like, instead of repressing your feelings, many, many, quite often when we have strong negative feelings, we, we, we repress them because they, we can't handle them, we can't deal with them. So we push them away, pretend we don't have them. That sort of eats away at us. That takes a lot of, it takes a lot of energy to repress things, to keep them underground, right? Uh, or to suppress them. Uh, that leads to things like exhaustion, uh, burnout, uh, even depression. And that leads you to not know yourself very well. If you're used to always repressing your feelings, you don't know yourself very well. You don't know what your needs are. Right? Uh, the, uh, so the other side is to just completely uh, go crazy and express your feelings with no filter. And without regard, without ability to listen to the other person. So the medium ground, which is really hard to do, is like, what am I feeling here? I'm really angry right now. Maybe like, the, you know, imagine like you're practicing this. I'm really angry. I want to, I want to yell. I want to, you know, I want to get in the other person's face and, you know, I call them names. <coughs> you know, uh, you listen to that and say, that's how I'm feeling. I'm really feeling that. You honor that. Now I'm going to put it aside for a minute and listen to what the other person is feeling. Oh, the, other, the other person has strong feelings as well. They also want to yell at me. They also are very <coughs> hurt in some ways. They also have you know, things they want to do. So can you, can, you, can you try to hear both sides? Now, you know, the, the, uh, the sort of bigger person in a fight is the person who can listen first. <laughs> I have really strong feelings about this, but you can't count on the other person to listen to you first. Now, some people are very good at that, and you know, if you have people who are good at conflict and who can put their needs aside for a minute, uh, it's good. You know? So you listen to them, and then you tell them, this is what I need. This is what I'm feeling. Um, so suspending, not repressing, suspending, hearing and putting aside your feelings, then actively practicing active listening with the other person and what they're thinking, what they're feeling, how you impacted them. And that will provoke more feelings in you because if you've hurt somebody, or, you know, if somebody tells you that you've done something that they disagree with, typically that makes us feel defensive. Now that's why self-esteem is key as a difference from uh, self-confidence and arrogance. Arrogant people are people who can't admit that they're wrong, who can't admit that they, that they are imperfect, who always have to be perfect. Many of us want to be perfect, and we're not. So can we accept that? Can we accept that I am imperfect and I'm okay with that? It's okay that I'm imperfect. It's okay that I make mistakes. It's okay that I brush people the wrong way. It's okay that I hurt people. It's okay that sometimes people think I'm an asshole. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for using that word, but that's the hardest one, right? Uh, it's very interesting. If somebody calls you a name like that, right? First reality is like, oh my God, that's not, you know. That hurts. I want to, you know, I feel attacked. I want to respond, and you know, mostly negate. No, I'm not. I'm not that. I don't want to. I, I don't like to hear that. I don't want to accept that I could be that. Now I see reality as multifaceted. You know, if somebody thinks I'm an a-hole, right, uh, and I don't think I am, then in my reality I'm not, but in their reality I am. Uh, can I, you know? Can we accept that reality is multifaceted? That at this, you know, in fact, the same behavior, one person may say, I love that. Another person say, I hated that. And another person, I was indifferent to that. So we, we provoke all kinds of different reactions to people. That's one thing I d discovered, uh, let me tell you, when I started teaching. At the end of, you know, I, I, I took me, I, I've been teaching for years. I was looking at evaluations carefully to, to try to learn, and at first I realized some people really thought they loved some aspect of the class, other people hated the same aspect of the class, and other people didn't care, or were in the middle, right? Uh, now, of course, I was trying to find a way to accommodate everybody, but I realized at some point it's not possible. There's always going to be some people who don't like a particular topic or a particular exercise or, you know, my style, 
And that's okay, you, know, you can't please everybody. You can't be perfect, you can't be all things to everybody. So, so that was a kind of interesting lesson for me in, in accepting uh, imperfection, right? Um, so self-esteem is accepting imperfection, accepting that other people don't see you as you see yourself, uh, and still being able to hear it and not crumble, not be like, what, one thing that can happen, if you have a weak self-esteem, somebody tells you something that they don't like, you're going to that one's peril and say, oh my God, I'm a horrible person, everybody hates me. And like, you believe completely what they tell you. Uh, the self-esteem is to say, okay, I, that person perceives me that way, especially under the guise of strong feelings. But that doesn't define me entirely. It doesn't defi define me entirely. You know, again, a uh, uh, personal story here. Uh, you know, one of my ex-girlfriends, uh, we had a bad breakup, and she really hated my guts at the end of the relationship, you know. And that really bothered me. I was like, oh my God, like I met, you know, she called me all kinds of names, you know. Uh, really felt bad about me. And for me, like, you know, hearing that was so hard, I was going this down one spirit, believing that I am that horrible person. It took me a while to get back out of that and say, I, you know, to her, I am that now, you know. But <coughs> I'm not that in the absolute. So, you know, the more self-esteem, you, know, the, 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 you know, I'm still building my self-esteem my self myself, but the more I progress, the more I'm like, I'm not perfect. I'm, I think, I hope I'm a pretty good person, but I certainly accept that I'm not perfect. And I try to live with it, you know, and hear it, and not crumble when somebody, you know, tells me they didn't like somebody I did. Uh, another part of having a good fight is when it's time for you, when you've practiced the active listening, when you've heard the other person, now, you know, again, think about how hard it is, you know. Somebody comes to me and say, JF, you really hurt me when you did that. And me, uh, in, you know, instead of feeling my first flush, maybe like, oh my God, what did I do? Uh, but I'm like, okay, tell me exactly what did I do? How did I hurt you? What, what is it specifically that I did? How do you feel about it? So I'm trying to explore something that's painful. So it's very important to be able to withstand the pain of exploring, you know, your own imperfections when you feel the most vulnerable and the most defensive. But if you can do that, wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the secret to a lasting marriage. That's the secret to a lasting friendship. That's the secret to healthy relationships. That's the secret to, at work, strong relationship. You can even practice that at work. Now, some people are really uncomfortable with conflict and they won't want to do that with you. So what do you do if the other person doesn't, you know, if you have a person who's avoidant of conflict, doesn't trust anybody to have a conflict with, then you can't have that talk. And if you try to have that talk, they're going to be defensive and they'll be like, what are you after? Like, what's, you know, what weird kind of communication are you trying to have with me? So you can only have that kind of depth with people who are ready for it, who want it, who understand it. But, but I, you know, I hope at least, in, you know, after having taken that class, you believe that there's value in having good fights, and you try to practice it, you know. Uh, and, it will, and it will tell you that, you know, if you have a strong relationship where you always avoid conflict, what happens in the end is you distance yourself from the other person because you, you have some needs that are not met. The other person has some needs that, they have that are not met. You know? Uh, you know, the same is true about, think about this. I'm bringing this back to couples because it's like it's so important, but it's true in, in, in at work, really, if you have deep, profound relationship. But, uh, like <coughs> the secret to a lasting couple is to explore each other's fantasies and desires, right? What, you know, and there's a big fear of like, what if the person doesn't like this? What if the person feels it's weird, you know? Uh, how can we explore the limits without getting completely weirded out? Uh, I, I would say the more communication, the better communication, the more open you are, the more willing you are to get out there and build that intimacy and, and you know, realize that you're not always going to be on the same page and that's okay, you know, the stronger your relationship is going to be. So. Uh, so when it's time to express your feelings, express them in a nuanced, centered manner and own them. So are you able to say, I'm really mad at you right now? I'm sorry for taking you as an example. I'm really mad at you. Now, that's very different than saying, I'm really effing mad at you, and so right there. That's, that's not centered, calm. Uh, there's great power in being able to say calmly an emotion. I'm really so happy. Typ typically, we have 
uh, easier time expressing positive feelings. Like I'm really happy, like wow, you know, you, you really like helped me on this one, I'm so grateful, you know. Uh, but some people have a hard time expressing positive feelings too. Uh, for some people it's, uh, it's uncomfortable, you know, if they're not used to doing it. Uh, so, you know, expressing feelings in a centered manner, owning them, we've talked about that before, realizing, so what is owning your feeling? It's not saying you made me feel that way. It's saying I feel that way and I own that I feel that way. So it's my, my, my filters and my worldview have as much to do in me feeling what I'm feeling now than the event itself. A, a different person than me would probably have different feelings in this situation. Now when you're the recipient of somebody telling you I'm really mad now, at you, you know, can you, can it, it's, hel it's helpful to not freak out to realize, oh, a lot of their anger is not, is not me, it's them. So uh, their filters, their needs, their expectation, which I know very little about, makes them mad. Um, and then in the end, you know, once you have practiced all that, engage in problem solving, where with eyes and substantive issues, in the end, what was the problem? and uh, trying to sort of manage sensitivity to the socio-emotional issues. Does that make sense, all of it? I really encourage you to practice that next time you have a conflict. That's a powerful one.